graduated in 2009, so I was a fourth grader in what, 2005? Which blows my mind that it's been that long, but uh, we'll get started. So right now, I'm at college, at Regis College in Boston, Massachusetts. Anybody know where that is? Boston, Massachusetts. Nice. Can you tell me a state that's close to it? I just want to make sure you guys know. New York. Nice. Good job. All right. So I graduated from Mesa in 2009. I graduated from Rio Mesa High School in 2014, which is part of the school that a lot of you guys will go to, but some of you guys may abandon and go to some other places that we won't mention. Um, I'm the captain of my men's volleyball team at Regis. Uh, I play a lot of sports. I've enjoyed them my whole life. And my favorite hobbies are surfing, snowboarding, and uh, playing video games with my friends from home. So uh, I'm a fairly normal person. So, oh, Regis is pretty far away. I know that some of you guys know that it's in Boston, Massachusetts, as you guys have told me, but it's about 3,000 miles away, which is like five hours by plane and five days by driving. And I've done both of them, which I've been a real pain, I can tell you that much. So, what do I do? I'm a nuclear medicine major at Regis College, and uh, these are just a few images that I can show you guys of what nuclear medicine is. Um, we'll get into it a little bit. We'll let everyone kind of get settled down. Um, nuclear medicine is part of diagnostic medicine, and does anyone know what diagnostic means? I know I put it on the board, but can anyone put it into their own words what diagnostic means? Go ahead. Kind of like Nice, that's a great answer. So essentially, it's looking to find a result, all right? And so when we're looking with diagnostic medicine, we're giving people things like CTs, x-rays, MRIs. Anybody had any of those? X-rays, anybody have broken arms? That's probably what you guys were in there for. All right, so in the nuclear medicine department, we're gonna be doing a little bit different stuff, but pretty much the same thing. We're gonna be taking images so that doctors can tell us what's wrong with the patient, what the patient needs to go through, and what treatment the patient has. Go. All right. So with nuclear medicine, nuclear medicine sounds really cool, and it is really cool, but uh, it's not quite as scary as it may seem. A lot of people when they hear nuclear, they think explosions, bombs, you know, stuff like that. We're nothing like that. Um, essentially all we do is we inject a patient with a radioactive isotope, and then we image the radiation coming off of that. So we'll get into that a little bit more a little bit later. So does anyone know what radiation is or where it stems from? Go ahead. Taking the first step, so essentially what radiation is, do you think we can feel or see radiation? No, no you can't. You can't feel it at all, you can't see it, which is why it can be so dangerous. Um, there are a lot of places that there will be, I mean, there's radiation going on right now. The earth gives off natural radiation, your organs give off natural radiation, those are radiating you. You don't feel it, you don't see any changes to it. We just get concerned when we see it at higher doses, like the stuff that I'll deal with in classes and clinical and work, all right? So essentially what radiation stems from, we all, do you guys know what an atom is? Yes. What's an atom? What makes up cells. So it's the smallest building block of matter, all right? And so when we break everything down, we can say that in this laptop there's trillions of trillions of atoms, all right? And in each of those atoms, we have three fundamental building blocks. We have a proton, a neutron, and an electron. So I'm gonna need four volunteers right now. Let me get two boys and two girls. Just because you guys are so close, I'm gonna grab you two as the two boys, and let me grab you two as the two girls, all right? So let me get you guys up here. What are you guys name them? Sophia, Lexi, Corey, Jackson. All right, so we're gonna call Corey and Jackson our two protons, all right? And your names again, Sophia and Lexi. And we're gonna call Sophia and Lexi our neutrons, okay? And so these two protons, they don't get along. They want to fight, so they don't want to be close to each other. Have you guys ever played with magnets? You yeah. have two negative ends, and they don't want to go together. If you have a positive and a negative, they want to go together. All right, these are two positives right here. They don't want to be anywhere close, because if they do get close, they're going to start fighting. Now, our neutrons here, they don't have a charge. They really don't care. They don't see why they're fighting. They don't understand it. They don't like them either. They just, they're kind of floating around. They're very neutral, which is where neutron comes from. So we're going to take one of them, and put them in between here, and we're gonna put one of them right here. Now what happens is now these two can't fight directly. There's a little bit of a space in between them, 
so they can't go to town, all right? So it's like that person in the middle of a fight holding people back, all right? That's what the neutrons do, okay? So you guys can sit down. Thank you. I appreciate it. Let's give them a round of applause. So what happens is we have so many protons and so many neutrons. And I know this might be a little bit more advanced, but the bigger or the uh, more weight an element has, the more protons we're going to have. So we have something really light like hydrogen, which has one proton and one neutron and one electron. But then when we start moving up and we start moving to the things that sound kind of scary, like germanium, bismuth, um, uranium, you start to get a lot of protons and a lot of neutrons, all right? And so it's much harder to balance those protons wanting to fight each other. So you have to throw a lot more of those neutrons in there to make sure everything's okay. And when you get to that point of imbalance, sometimes some of them will break loose and they'll go crazy. And that's where radiation comes from. It's a little broken down, but think of it as a bunch of guys in a room who want to fight and a bunch of girls standing there to make sure that they can't do it. And at some point, there aren't enough girls to hold these guys back and they just start swinging. All right? Make sense, kind of? Yeah. All right, great. So, what happens when we detect radiation? Um, when that radiation comes off, we can detect it in a few different ways. Some people might have heard of a Geiger counter. You ever seen that? Maybe on like a TV show or something, someone's holding a little uh, device and it starts ticking a lot, and then it starts ticking a lot, and people get super freaked out. Yeah, anyone seen those? Yeah. Maybe? All right, more or less. What I'll do, or what we'll do in clinical, is we'll have a camera. It's a special type of camera so that every time a little bit of radiation shoots out, it's gonna detect that radiation and put it onto an image. So for the more adept people here, what do you guys think this is? A skeleton. A skeleton, right? Uh, is this from the front or the back? This first one, the front. And this one's from the back. Great, good job. All right, so this is what we do, and this is a skeleton scan. And so what we do is we look for uptake in the skeleton. It's, um, it's pretty simple. What are your bones made of, roughly? Calcium. Calcium. What else? Nice. There you go. So the biggest things that our bones uptake are calcium and uh, phosphate, all right? So what we do is we tag our radioactivity to a little bit of phosphate. And when we put it into someone's blood, it starts to get uptaken in their bones, okay? So if we see that their bone is growing a lot in that area, we're going to see nice hot spots. So you'll see a couple spots right here, right here on the shoulders. There's a little bit more growth there, all right? And so when we start to see someone who has a problem, you'll start to see really hot spots in weird places. So this one is pretty normal. You don't really see too many of the long bones. You just see kind of blank space. But if there's a hot spot right there, that could mean that they might have broken that bone, that there's an infection there, there might be cancer there. And so that's what we use, and that's, what we, that's how we diagnose a lot of problems. So these are just some other pictures that we're going to get into. Now some of them are pretty easy. What do you guys think this is? Lungs. 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 I heard that. What do you guys think this one is? Brain. Brain. All right. This one might be tough. What's this one? Teeth. Teeth? Ooh. I still haven't heard it yet. It's one of the most important organs in your body. Heart. Nice. Do you guys see it a little bit? Or no. No? no? Close my mouth. And then this one is just the whole human body again, all right? So with the brain, I'll just kind of explain a little bit of what we do with brain imaging. So what happens is you have blood that's naturally flowing to your brain. Do you guys think it would be good if not enough blood is getting to a certain part of the brain? No. no, that's probably not a good sign, right? And so what usually happens when we don't see blood flowing to a certain part of the brain You'll have someone who has seizures, or you'll have someone who just passes out randomly, someone who has speech impediments, and that all depends on what part of the brain is affected by it. So we give them this injection, we get to see where the blood is flowing in their brain. So it's pretty simple. What's up? What, um, is the red the, the that are gone? That's a great question. So the red means that there's going to be more uptake in this spot, and the blue means that there's less. And so on this color scale, it's kind of like when you guys are looking at the weather and you see that we're going to have a bunch of red over Oxnard or Camarillo and Ventura. It means we're getting heavy, heavy rain. So the lighter it is or the cooler it is, the less blood is flowing. Yes? Is there a detector at the camera when you move Yeah, and it probably looks just like that. Yeah. All right. Uh-huh. On the whole body, why is the on the Where? 
bladder? So that's a great question too. You guys are very, very intuitive. So what happens is how do we get things out of our body? How do we get things that we don't want out of our body? We go to the bathroom, right? And so what systems do we use? We use our urinary system and our general urinary system. What? Right? So what happens is you start to get all that stuff that's trying to leave your body and it all accumulates in that bladder. And so that's why, like you saw, you see this nice big hot spot on the bladder. That doesn't mean there's anything wrong with them. That's just normal. Okay? Let's go back to the heart real quick. So this is the heart. Now this isn't the whole heart, so that might be why you guys were a little bit confused. I know it's kind of tough, and I remember the first time I saw it, I didn't get it. But the teeth are a good guess. I've never heard that before. So this is only the left ventricle of the heart. So it's only the left side of the heart. And the reason we look at that side is because that's the part that has the most motion, and that's the part that has the most muscle, all right? The rest of the heart kind of just sits there and lets the left ventricle do its work. So we look at that after somebody's had a heart attack to make sure that blood is still flowing to their heart. Okay? Uh-huh. Why is there only one dominant side? Um, you would have to ask whoever made the human body. We're not sure, but it seemed to work out pretty well if we have how many people here? 60 plus people who are still working away. Um, the right side still works decently hard, but the left side really is the powerhouse. But I couldn't tell you exactly why. Good question. All right, so this is where we kind of start getting into how did I get here. Um, I sat where you guys sat. I, uh, I can tell you guys right now, I probably wasn't considered like the brightest student here. So there's still hope for everybody. Don't count yourself out. Um, my favorite subjects in school were math and science. So I know that there's probably about half of you who enjoy Let me see math and science, raise your hand. And let me see a little bit more artistic. Arts, music, art, art, there we go. So, so the way that I got to this spot is after middle school, kind of finding out what I liked, I took all the classes in high school that I could to make sure that, you know, I nurtured my, uh, my interest in math and science. So I took um, calculus, I took chemistry, I took organic chemistry, I took as many classes as I could to set myself up for college, okay? Now, a couple traits that Ms. Wagner told me to talk about, um, I picked off a list, and these were the ones that I thought um, related to me the most, and persistence. The first one, as I said, I probably wasn't the brightest kid in school, so there were a lot of nights that I really, really had to study hard, I had to kind of forget about other stuff that was going on in my life, and make sure that I could move forward and make sure that I could make something for myself in college and in high school. Um, I work very hard at the stuff that I do, and I'm very proud of that, and there's no reason that you guys shouldn't do that as well. Um, persistence is one of those attitude things. It's not something that you're kind of given at the beginning of your life. It's something that you can build and something you can always grow with. Um, and risk-taking. This one is pretty much just because I'm 3,000 miles away from home. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys have gone to like summer camp or something and missed your parents, but I can tell you, it's brutal going away from school or going away from home and missing my parents almost every day. But when it comes down to it, I enjoy it. And I still know that I'm doing the right thing for me. And I know that my mom suffers as well. She's right back there, this is Sarah. Um, but I think we both agree that I've made the best decision for myself and I've set myself up for a good future, right? So I'm going over just that same thing that I talked about a little earlier. At Mesa, this is where you need to find what you really enjoy learning about. And it's much easier for me to look back and see what I should have done versus look at what I did. And so this is the path that I wish I had taken. I wish here I had looked at all the different things, looked at the arts, looked at science, looked at math, and made sure that I decided the right one, which I think that I did, but it's much easier to tell you guys now. So decide what you want to do, and then when you go off to high school, you guys got to make sure that whatever you like you start to you know, feed into that. So if you like science, take those classes like chemistry, take those classes like biology or math. And then in college, that's when you really decide what you're gonna do for the rest of your life. Um, when I got there, I'm gonna be honest with you, I picked nuclear medicine because it sounded the coolest and it had to do with science. And things worked out really well. I've enjoyed it and it's been absolutely great. But that only worked out because I knew that I really enjoyed math and science. And then after college, that's when you really decide what you're gonna get into, whether you're gonna go into your job, or if you're gonna go into further studying, which I'd like to. I think I'm going to medical school within the next two years, which is 
another 10 years of school, which I know sounds daunting for you guys, seeing as you're only about what? Anywhere between four and eight years in? Yeah, so that's like, I think I'm pushing on. If I'm in 16th grade right now, that'll be 24th grade by the time I graduate. <laughs> Yeah, I know, great. So these are just a couple of other tips that I thought that I'd include. Um, never give up, and this goes along with that be persistent part. Uh, there were a lot of times that I really could have given up. There were a lot of times that I could have stopped doing sports, I could have stopped doing classes, I could have just kind of bummed out and gotten a job and just started working and staying at home. But uh, I think that you guys are a pretty motivated group. You guys seem pretty smart, so I don't see why you guys can't accomplish what I'm doing, or maybe even more. Oh, hang on. Um, don't be afraid of the unknown. I know that I touched on the fact that it's difficult to be away from home and difficult to be away from your parents, but don't let stuff like that stop you. I've seen a lot of my friends get into that spot where they are ready to move on to something bigger and better, but they'll kind of hold back because they just don't want to leave what's comfortable. And I can tell you that seeing something that's uncomfortable and seeing kind of adversity really is what makes you better as a person, all right? Um, always ask questions and keep an open mind. There are some of you guys, and I remember I used to think that I was super into arts. I thought that for the longest time. I thought it was the coolest thing. I thought I loved it. But then we started doing stuff in gate, we started doing stuff in art class, and I kind of realized that I was not the best at it. Um, I'll be honest with you. So that's when I started looking more towards other stuff and found that I could find enjoyment in other, um, other subjects. Uh, don't let others tell you what you enjoy studying. I know that a lot of you guys might be in a friend group that kind of feels one way, and it's real easy for that group to say, oh, we all love this, or we all love this, whether that be like the latest Twilight movie, the latest Star Wars movie, or what study, or what like subjects you guys like in school. But try to make sure that you guys are your own person and that you guys decide what you want to do. Um, don't be afraid to change your mind. This is a huge one. Um, just like with that whole art thing that I used to enjoy, there are some people who will go down a long road and realize that's not what they want to do, and they'll just stick with it because they feel like they've gone down this road for a long enough time. I know a few people who are seniors in college right now who have gotten to the point where they've finished their clinical rotations, they've been working, getting a job for a little bit, but they realize it's not what they want to do for the rest of their life, but they feel like, oh, you know what, I've already sunk 10 years into this, I might as well just go through with it. And that's not what you should do. Pursue what makes you happy. Pursue what you think is good for you. Um, and this is a big one. This one, I think you guys might like. Balance your school with things outside of school, like sports. Um, volleyball has been such a blessing for me. It's been something that lets me, you know, let out any physical angst that I have. Um, it lets me find friends, you know? A lot of my friends that I have are from volleyball, and I've had it all the way up to Ruben Chill College. And volleyball is actually the reason that I'm going to the college so far away because they decided to give me a scholarship for playing for it. So don't completely neglect your sports, but focus on your studies as well. All right, and so this is my final slide. I'll kind of wrap up with you guys. So this is where you guys are. You guys are this little blue dot, all right? So you guys are learning all your general knowledge. You guys are getting to know the world. You're getting to understand things. And from what I can tell, you guys really understand it pretty well. You guys know what an atom is, what radiation is to some degree, all that stuff. And so high school, we just kind of move out a little bit. We broaden that horizon just a little bit. And we start to move into some type of specialized spot. So we'll take this as my journey, for example. And we'll say that this is math and science, more nuclear science. So I start to move that way. And then we go to a bachelor's degree, and we start to push even further, broaden that horizon even more. And so this is about where I am, all right? This is human knowledge as we know, all right? This is everything that we know, this whole big box, or this whole big circle, all right? So I'm about here. Then after that, you can get a master's degree and go even further, and then a PhD and go even further. And this is where that PhD comes in, and you start to push outside that little bit of what we know, all right? And it's only at that point that you start to learn something genuinely new to humankind. This is kind of a big idea, and it still kind of scares me even when I look at it because I realize that I'm only right here when I would love to be way up here or all over here. But when it comes down to it, keep pushing and keep doing a good job in your school. And I wish you guys the best of luck. Do you guys have any questions? Go ahead.
PhD. So after your master, so after college, your bachelor's degree, you can get a master's degree and you can, you can get a PhD. And a PhD typically takes about four to six years of intense studying on only one subject. And that's not like math and science. That means studying one absolutely specific subject, like uh, cell biology and specific animals. You really, really specify and make sure that you learn one thing really, really well. So if you ever meet someone who says that they're a PhD in something, don't question them, because they know what they're talking about. Did you, have, did you have any, like, what's your minor? My minor? I don't have a minor. I'm just nuclear medical. Did you have any, did you change your major from something else to nuclear medicine? Uh, fortunately, I didn't. I've always been a nuclear medicine major, but um, I know a lot of my friends have changed their majors. Uh, a lot of them started as um, nursing majors, stuff like that, pre-medical majors, and they kind of dropped down to biology and stuff. So uh, it's good to see that they found a different path for themselves. Anything else? No, I don't. Um, I'm in my senior year right now, so I hope that I don't change my major. Um, if I did, I may have to retake my last two years, but it's a great question. Anything else?